bro. That's what's going on with my car, bro. It's like my fourth gear's gone. All right, I'm going 50 on the way home. This is so stressful, bro. Five, 10, 15, 20, 20. We're gonna start today's video at about 20 horsepowers. Let's get into it. horsepower noise first time ever getting center caps guys gonna cover up that big old axle bolt oh yeah we got gloss black with the gold logo matching the gold Brembo's for the specs so we got 18 inch black chrome rpf ones we got the black gloss with the gold logo center cap we got the powder coated gold brembo brakes and we got the brembo sticker with clear coat over it the lug nuts we have the project kicks r40s uh, these ones are due to be replaced but i love these things because they do not scratch the wheels that stop spinning once it's onto the wheel so your lug nut isn't actually spinning onto the wheel when you're tightening it and it stops it from scratching it nine and a half wide in the front ten and a half wide in the rear all around plus 15 offset wrapped in some hand cooks in the front we got 245 40 and over here in the rear we have 285 35 the hand cook ventus v12s now there's one comment that was made when i first got these that keeps me up every night and someone said he got a staggered setup and chooses to put the big tires on the rear on a front wheel drive car <sighs> look guys if i had to choose i would have gotten nine and a half both front and rear it's because this came off of Infiniti Q50 and those are rear wheel drive. But clearly you guys don't know that the 10 and a half plus 15 with that big of a tire is not gonna fit up here in the front of the TL. I don't know if people think I'm like stupid, but man, that's crazy. Oh, this is still recording? All right. Okay, stop. Before we go any farther with today's video, make sure you guys drop a like for the center caps. <laughs> All right guys, it's been a couple days and today we take the clutch in to get put onto the car. So let's talk a little bit about the clutch setup. We've got a stage three clutch from spec. And um, here she is. So new clutch, we got a new, new friction plate with the bolts. On the car right now, we have a OEM, I think, I can't remember if I put a Luke one in there or put the OEM one in there. I want to say OEM though because I for sure put a Luke one in the gray TL. So our current setup is going to be an OEM clutch with a lightweight flywheel. Um, I'll leave a link to the flywheel in the description as well as this clutch. Me and Taylor were thinking about going back to just a steel um, instead of aluminum flywheel, the OEM one that is heavier for smoother shifting. I've read up with the aluminum ones, it'll just, it'll shift in the gear more aggressively. And um, yeah, I don't really know a lot about clutches and stuff, but that is why we are thinking about going with the OEM one again. While the car is at the shop, we are gonna be installing these V-band clamp gaskets, as well as DEI exhaust rods. Clutch, and she'll be ready to rip after we break in the clutch. So 300 to 500 miles is where it's suggested. So we got a 25 minute drive to the shop in St. Helens. My brother was supposed to meet me at the shop to give me a ride back and he won't respond to me this morning. So I think I'm gonna have to find an Uber back to the shop. He was supposed to, dude, I was gonna give him the keys to my truck. He was supposed to just drive me back. 25 minute drive. 
light work. Now we gotta get an Uber. Just made it out. Lively repair on the St. Helens. Instead of uh, instead of calling an Uber, he's gonna let me borrow one of his drives to come back here and pick up the car. Here, I can raise it all the way. Let's see. Does that look like it's gonna clear? That'll help, yeah. Okay. Maybe you put some wood underneath it to get up on there? Yeah, yeah. Wanna go everything right now and I take off from there or just? Yeah. Okay. There's a leak in one of, in the V-bands. Okay. And I was just hoping that you could just throw in these gaskets on the V-bands on the turbo. Okay. The exhaust manifold. We have new friction plate. Everything should line up with the flywheel I have on there right now because it's a lightweight flywheel. Whoops, that was the gas. <laughs> yeah, so underneath this cover right here. These, mm -hmm. one, two, and then right underneath here, there's a little screw just okay. to keep it, hold it right here. Once that little screw's out, this thing pops off and it just slides that way. Oh, right on. Hold. How long have you had this package put together like this? The turbo setup? Yeah. It's been like two, three months. Oh, really? Yeah. So this all so, recent. Yeah, I've seen people where they don't have to pull the starter, but I think you might have to because of the turbo mount right there. Yeah. Shouldn't have to take down the, the bottom down pipe area. It's just this one I want wrapped. Okay. Then when you're done, just let me know. And then maybe me and you can go take it out and test it. Yeah. 250 mile braking period. And we rocking and rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the biggest concern would be if the flywheel's in good condition. Yeah. It's only been on there for 10,000 miles, so it should be all right. But. Yeah. And I should've got all the seals and stuff for like the rear main seal and stuff just while we're in there. I'll see what it looks like. But if I think it, it if should it, be okay. If it's leaking, yeah. we, we can get one. But, uh, I haven't seen any oil leaks down there, but okay. I know we got the turbo set up, more pressure, and yeah. it's, I should've just done it. We got all the way back to the shop and then I realized I forgot to give him the lock nut remover thing. So this is the downside of having these locks on it because I got to keep it with the car. So now we're headed 30 minutes back, 30 minutes back to the shop. Had to cancel a detail job. No problem though, the guy's next door. <laughs> and we're back. It's up on the lift and they're gonna start pulling things apart. They're gonna drop the subframe to get the tranny out. See you guys when we're back to pick it up. I had to tell all of them each to take care of my car. I don't want to see no scratches. If there's any added scratches to it, I'm gonna notice. All right, guys, we are headed back to mechanics for the last time. Car is ready for pickup two and a half days later. And uh, yeah, it is currently seven in the morning. Uh, it was just way too late in the day that the car got done. So we decided to pick it up today. Reason being, they spent 10 plus hours on the car. We ran into some complications with the transmission and the previous clutch that uh, I'll throw up some photos but oh man, I was I was about to have a heart attack the other day when he said we got to take the transmission into a transmission shop to get rebuilt and see what they can do because what happened is back in 2020 we put it was actually a loop transmission that was in there and I only have 10,000 miles on it thankfully but uh, and and the damage is as minimal as you can get but it's still some damages. Um, anyways, the, the clutch plate was put on backwards. There's a transmission side and then there's the, uh, the shaft motor side. So, um, it was put on backwards and on the transmission side, the spindle piece doesn't stick out as much as it does on the engine side. And so every time I was hard on it, it was rubbing up against the transmission. I want to say spline. I don't know the proper name for the transmission parts but yeah so he told me that and then they stopped working on it and i was going to get an answer for them of what i wanted to do with it and taylor was like bro there's nothing you can do what are you gonna do get a new transmission so just go ahead clean up the shavings and throw in the new clutch and everything should be good so yeah i threw up some photos for you guys so you can see where it says transmission side and where it was rubbing and whatnot anyways kind of frustrating 
take it from me guys don't take your car to a shop because they're the most convenient or the cheapest take it to the person that's most qualified we're in the mechanics truck headed back to him freshly detailed how to do him a little favor and i gotta pay a big bill and we're back boys put some wood on the tires to clear the lift the old clutch in here yeah so the uh friction plate was totally yeah. different on yours, all the bolts holding it together were straight across from each other. You can see how this has got the diagonal pattern. Well, this is the new one? Yeah. You guys didn't even run it? Well, you can't. That's what I'm saying. The bolt pattern was different. Really? Yeah. How, how was the condition on the other one? It actually wasn't that bad. I mean, it, it looked like it had very little wear on it. Okay. I mean, I just went ahead and cleaned it up and, you know, it had a good surface on it. It didn't look bad. So it was all pretty much new stuff, you know, but that hub was grinding on the front of the transmission mm -hmm. so it wouldn't let this sit where it needed to you know it needs yeah, to be able to so float on the shaft back and, forth. and so could have almost just taken it all apart flipped this around and put it back together and, and it probably would have held up even better than yeah. the uh, pressure plate that um you got is a lot stronger than this pressure plate oh yeah you yeah. can re you can really feel yeah, it on the yeah. yeah i mean it was it, and this seemed like it was a wider surface area yeah but that other clutch system, though, it, it... I might just have to cross-reference part numbers to make sure I got the right thing. Yeah, I think it needs to be... I think it needs to engage a little bit lower. You know what I mean? It's kind of engaging up here yeah, at the yeah, top. Yeah, that's what I was trying to accomplish. It's a lot heavier for sure though. Yeah, yeah. I like that feeling though. It was pretty light before. It's now, it's like the sand cars, yeah. you know. That was me. Yeah, it engages too high for sure. But before we adjusted it to the very bottom, so I got used to that. Yeah. It's because I use pieces from the uh, stock one. Yeah, see, I'm used to it being so low. <laughs> Slipping. Is it maxed out right on top as far as free play? I mean, do you have any free play on the pedal or does it feel like it's totally? Yeah, that gives out about the same spot it was before. All right, I'll haul her back at you after a bit. Yeah, it feels like it's like half engaged. That's what it feels like. There's a little shake there at the top of that. Oh no. Something's not tightened all the way. Oil. That's oil. Fitting or something. Well, it's that bottom, that black fitting down there. Yeah, no, I see it. Did it ever get loosened up or anything? I don't think so. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I tightened that up when we got it back from the fab and it hasn't leaked since. Gonna try to fix that oil leak down there. Kind of unfortunate, but uh, Worst case is the tranny slipping up pretty badly. She's back on the lift. Don't want to take it home dripping oil. Found out why it was dripping oil. You see right up in there. See right, right there there's an Allen bolt. I'll throw a photo up. And it looks like one of them backed out. I went back on the photos from the fabricator and it had two Allens in there, so it just looks like one Allen backed out, and that's why we've been dripping oil. So that one just started, the Allen in there started to get a little loose. We just got back from another drive. Car feels fine. No more leaks. <sighs> All right, boys, what time is it? 
11. Talk to Taylor. He said it's going to slip if you step on it. He said it takes some time to break this thing in. So just things I'm learning along the way. Um, the mechanic didn't think that. Yeah. Obviously, Taylor is very familiar with this stuff. And so I put a lot of trust in him. It's kind of a blind spot. Can't really see if anyone's coming. It's already feeling a little bit better though. It's starting to engage in the middle instead of the top. The friction plate that we got was the wrong one. That's the one that's supposed to go to the spec flywheel. And I have the and I have the Aceco flywheel on the car, so that's why the bolts didn't line up. So that uh, answered that question. Now we're gonna order a new friction plate. We're gonna order the Master Slave, and we're gonna order the P2R braided clutch line. We'll be back next week to get that stuff in. The next five days though, we'll just drive the car, baby it around town. We're just gonna baby shift our way home and make that the video. Check out the links down below, guys, for the right setup. I'm not gonna put the wrong stuff that I ordered. I'll put the right setup inside of the description below, so check that out if you guys are looking to get this setup for your car. Hopefully the transmission is healthy and okay. So much money is just going, and I feel like it's just like a waste. Like, this is now 2200 spent on the clutch setup, and I gotta come back next week and probably spend another 500 for him to install the new friction plate and the uh, the braided line, So, which I could probably do that myself, but I'd rather just have a shop do it with the lift. I'm looking to get my own lift at the shop though, so I can just pull down that subframe, detail it, powder coat it, <laughs> and go crazy with it. I got a huge video coming up for you guys. It has to do with the exhaust, my dream exhaust setup for the TL, so definitely stay tuned for that video. My camera's about to die. We're going to wrap the video up right here, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Bro, that's what's going on with my car, bro? It's like my fourth gear's gone. All right, I'm going 50 on the way home. They're mad at me. <laughs> this is so stressful, bro. I don't wanna ever have to do this again. Please, please, I just hope I make it home.